Once, we travelled the stars. We saw things that brought us joy. We made discoveries that kept us hungry for more. But some of those discoveries were hungry for us. Hey, hey, it's TDA, and today I want to share with you my impressions of the colony management game demo that recently came out called Beyond These Stars. Now, this is actually a sequel to a game I played two years ago on the channel called Before We Leave. I'm not entirely sure what's up with the names of these games, but okay. Um, and actually, it's a really a sequel. So there are some references back to that game. It plays very similarly to the original game as well. But you don't necessarily need to have played the other game. However, if you listen to these first impressions and you think this game sounds interesting to you, you might as well go back and pick up the other one as well, because it's currently, I think, on a pretty large discount as well. And, well, it's a full game, while this one is still up for release later this year. So the setting of this game is actually pretty interesting. So you are a bunch of explorers that initially set out to make a colony on the back of a giant whale floating around in space. Now, if that sounds far-fetched, it of course is, but it actually makes complete sense if you played the first game, because at the end of that game, some space whales might show up and start eating your planet. Now, basically what the storyline of this game is, is that the explorers try to set out to a space whale that actually did visit their planet, but actually seemed friendly. So they were like, hey, let's go check that out and see what these space whales are all about. So... Long story short, basically you start a colony on the back of this space whale. There are apparently resources, trees and things like that on the back of this whale. And as it turns out, the space whale decides to leave. So you're kind of stuck left behind on the back of this whale. And you're pretty much left to your own defenses. And you're going to have to set up a new society with just the materials available on the back of the whale. Initially at least. Now the basics behind this game are pretty similar to pretty much every other city builder out there. So you're going to have to mine some resources, cut down some trees, set up some housing and deal with some food production in order to make sure your people don't starve. On top of that, you are going to have to deal with the happiness of your people because basically the harder they have to work, the less food they have or the more pollution there is around them the less happy they will become. So you need to balance these things out and also make sure they every now and then can relax in a nice and pretty meadow or near a fountain or anything like that. Now, as I said, you're going to have to deal with pollution and you can imagine that this whale that you're on the back of isn't necessarily too happy about the fact that you're causing pollution on its back. However, it's not necessarily all bad because what you can actually also do is terraform the back of this giant space whale's environment. So initially when you start out, you start in a nice little habitable zone that you can cut down some trees and have access to water and things like that. But the outside of that zone is actually all barren landscaping. So there are some trees out there, but they're completely dry. You can breathe the air and so on. The way you solve this is actually by doing some terraforming. Specifically, what you do is you make sure that the water is flowing across the back of this giant turtle, thereby um, bringing the trees back to life. And then the pretty trees will start producing some oxygen so you can actually breathe there and expand your territory. Now, this space whale is actually not just another excuse for a planet to found your base on, but you can actually communicate with it as well. So it's kind of part of the storyline, and this is supposed to be an older creature that can't travel that much, but it's actually kind of curious about what's going on with you, as you are curious about what's going on with it. So basically, you decide to travel along with it, help each other out a little bit, and that's actually a really new twist to this game because this space will actually allow you to travel amongst the stars and kind of explore a map while you go along and do that. Now, the demo itself doesn't show too much of this aspect of the game just yet, but what I can tell from other things that I've read about this game is that apparently you can not just colonize the back of the space wheel, but at some point you can actually go and start colonizing other planets and get resources that way as well, which is a good thing because resources do run out in this game, so at some point you will not have any resources left on the back of your space wheel. 
The gameplay loop is actually really, really zen and relaxing. This is not a very difficult game, although it's actually a little bit harder than you might at first glance think because you do need to make sure you get the balance between things right. You need to have some food production, you need to have enough people to actually well, perform all the jobs that you have available to them. And as resources do run out, you do need to keep an eye on that. But like I said in general, the pacing of this game is really slow and relaxed. The music is very nice and relaxing as well, so that helps with that. And overall, the game works very well. It shouldn't be too surprising, of course, because this is the second game in a series. And it's, again, pretty much in line with the first game that had the same things going on. It was also really relaxed and did actually work pretty well as well. I didn't came across any bugs or anything like that during the demo, so it seems to be f fairly well polished already. All the game systems are there, and what I actually find that's really interesting in this particular game is that the technology that you need in order to unlock next tiers of buildings and technologies and things like that are not unlocked by doing actual research, but you actually just produce items that you unlock thereby unlocking the next thing so there's a really natural progression and you don't need to worry about things like technology trees or technology production i should say to balance out with everything else that your colony needs basically you just start producing the things that your colony needs and as a result of that you get access to new things which you can then use to unlock even more things so it's a very simple system it's very straightforward but it, again i think it's a nice touch compared to how some of these other games handle this now obviously there is not a huge amount of things to talk about given that the demo took me about an hour to complete but it does give a fairly good impression of what the game is going to be. Now normally that I would say is a good thing but for some reason the previous game never really clicked with me. I had a lot of fun with it initially but then in the later parts of the game I don't know exactly why but I just wasn't really that interested anymore in the long run. Honestly I can't say it's a bad game it just didn't click with me. So I'm actually really curious for the people watching this, let me know in the comments, did you play either the demo or the previous game before we leave? Um, and if so, what did you think about that? Because if there's a lot of people interested in this game, I will of course showcase it on the channel some more when it actually comes out. But if there's no interest in that, I will probably skip this one myself. And again, not because it's necessarily a bad game, it just is not for me. Either way, I did actually enjoy playing the demo, even though it's not necessarily my thing. And I will be exploring more games in this genre over the next couple of weeks. So if you want to see more of this, then make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I do hope to catch you in the next one.